two more to go. Uh, Bob Lukes from Missoula Brewing. Where are you, Bob? All right. So as Bob makes his way up here, Danny is uh, doing, some, doing some cleanup, doing some new beer delivery. Yes, thank you. All right, guys. Take it away. Three minutes. Greetings from Montana. So Missoula Brewing Company has a history that dates back to the 1800s. In 1910, uh, they started a beer called Highlander, and they did so with permission of a team called the New York Highlanders that went on to become the New York Yankees. Highlander became the big beer in Montana, some fantastic old marketing, uh, very charming stuff. In the mid-60s, the interstate came through, took out the property by eminent domain, and that was the last time that uh, Highlander uh, was made in Montana. I moved to Montana in the early 80s and started seeing kind of the remnants of that old marketing and had this crazy notion like, wouldn't it be great to have a Highlander again? And so um, 20 years later, as a trademark attorney, I was able to register all those old brands. And my wife and I started a business, did some contract brewing with a single beer, a, a Scottish Red Ale that came out in 2008. But the dream was always to have a facility in Missoula. And so we partnered uh, with my good friend Mark Pierce here. And uh, we built an 18,000 square foot facility. Um, we've got a 30 barrel brewing system, 100 barrel fermenters. Um, and uh, Pizza Kitchen, we're right on Grant Creek in Missoula. Um, did a national search for a brewer, ended up with a fantastic guy from Stouts Brewing in Pennsylvania. Um, we bottled our first package uh, this last week, literally here. And uh, the big challenge was always how we're gonna take uh, Highlander, this old vintage brand, into the 21st century. And I'd let Mark will tell you about that. Hey, you left me less than half the time. So yeah, we've got this unbelievably colorful and successful tradition in the Highlander brand in Montana. How to, how to build on that and, and, and uh, you know, advance it forward, we wanted heavy doses of Montana uh, uh, in the rebranding. Um, you know, we're in Montana, it's all about the lifestyle, wildlife, outdoors, skiing, uh, backpacking, that kind of thing. So you'll see that in our branding. So we've, we've maintained the signature Highlander logo that you see in Bob's apparel. This is the old logo together with artwork and uh, each of the, the beer variety names are mountain peaks in Montana. So the, we just want very much the whole DNA of the brand to be connected to this place that we love and that we're so much a part of and we think a lot of other people love. We met a few of them in the room um, called Montana. In the same way that you know, Kona's had so obviously had great success. Alaska's had great success in, in leveraging the great uh, attributes uh, of their state. So uh, it's all about Highlander Taste Montana, which is our trademarked uh, tagline. It'll be sort of the platform for our uh, our social media and all of our marketing efforts to get the word out there about Highlander. So my time's up. The beer that you're going to taste is what we're calling our American Box. So it's a little. A little lighter, a little more drinkable than the German box, but still got a real, you know, real some nice roasty notes, but on a lager profile. Um, Bob mentioned uh, uh, the, our, our head brewer, who we're very excited and very proud of. He's a, a master with both lagers and ales, which we think gives us lots of opportunities. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. He's got a mic over there. Round of applause for Missoula Brewing. So, uh, you know, to sort of start with, like, you know, the heritage, vintage feel, um, you know, seeing this be somewhat successful for some others, Narragansett in the Northeast, Pabst obviously has a bunch of vintage brands. Uh, what do you think about the ability for another, you know, small upstart, um, you know, sort of revived vintage brand? How, how will that play? Uh, Mike, we'll start with you. Well, I think it's what's, just, what's interesting is how contemporary you made this feel at the same time. So that nostalgia, that story, that history seems like it's there and it's probably important to the people that are close to it. Uh, but from far away, I can appreciate it just for the execution on the, on the, the artwork and the branding. It feels very contemporized to me. Um, I think from a distance, just looking at the slide we have here, the system that you've created for the branding is really strong. Uh, I think that's going to make it really easy for you guys to be recognized, but each individual brand might be difficult to recognize. Even from this distance, they all kind of start to look the same, right, because of the complexity of those illustrations, which will be a balance going forward with a static portfolio. You know, you know, five or six beers on the shelf at a time, not so bad, but if you're going to grow beyond those, that number of SKUs, it becomes challenging to introduce new brands that way. Tommy, what do you think about the beer? American Bach. Um, not my favorite, but uh, well brewed. Um, very nice beer. So thank you for that. Um, thank you. I was 
wondering in terms of the Montana part of it, if you were to leave Montana with this beer, what's the play? What's the relativity outside of Montana? Obviously neighboring states and things, but this fits the sort of notion of this is home, this is that nostalgia brand. Um, does it translate to a, you know, three states over? You know, I think it really does, and, and we think that Montana has a lot of cachet everywhere we go. We, we talk about, hey, you're from Montana. People get excited about that, and really that's the, the foundation of it, that Taste Montana slogan um, is designed specifically to become a regional player. Obviously, in Montana, all the Montana brewers are Montanan, right? But when we get out, uh, out elsewhere, uh, we think that has a lot of power and cachet, and there's not a lot of Mont Montana brewers that are exporting to other states. So. A pretty ambitious start, I'd say. Uh, you know, certainly from the image that you had on there, it looked like a very uh, beautiful space. Um, you know, a lot of room to grow. Uh, you know, wh what do you think about that approach, kind of starting sort of bigger from the start? I guess I'll kick that to, to Tom. You started a, you know, a small little operation. Yeah, so my question, uh, you said you'd been contracting brewing the Highlander since 08. And so that was, you, how long have you had the actual restaurant brewery then? So, sorry, I left that out. We opened in July. Of this so, year? Yeah, this year. Wow. And so we're four months out. We've already got four uh, you know, packages designed. So then the rolling basically out this for the last like six years then this Highlander's been available in Montana as a contract brand under your supervision. That's correct. Okay. And, that, and that one variety and that license was terminated the end of last year. So everything is in-house now. And uh, final word from uh, Carmen, uh, just about the, the brand in general and, and where you could see something like this going. I, I really <coughs> appreciate the look of the brand. I, I would echo what Michael said and um, some greater distinction with color maybe variation I think could help distinguish it on shelf. Um, personally, I'm a little bit confused. I think that the Highlander branding is so strong and it's a little bit confusing to have both uh, Missoula Brewing and Highlander. So just um, balance out what you want to take prominence. Maybe just do away with one of those um, would be my only comment. Okay, thank awesome. you. Great, great job, guys. Agreed. Cheers. 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 I'll give you the fist bump.